later, our country would face its greatest crisis and challenge. Two months after Abraham Lincoln was elected president, South Carolina withdrew from the Union. Four after that, Abraham Lincoln wrote a letter to a friend. In that letter, Lincoln wrote, I fully appreciate the present peril the country is in and the weight of responsibility on me. Through the disastrous defeats at the battles of Bull Run, Wilson's Creek, Second Manassas, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Chickamauga, through the bloody stalemates at Shiloh, Stones River, Wilderness, through the bloody victories at Antietam and Gettysburg, Lincoln stood firm. During the darkest hours of the American Civil War, Abraham Lincoln had the moral courage to begin the process of freeing our nation's slaves. In 1865, he was re-elected president, and he did not step back from his responsibilities. In 1865, he gave what could be the most famous presidential inaugural speech in our country's history. In that speech, Lincoln said, with malice towards none, with charity for all, with the firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds. The years after the American Civil War, the Industrial Revolution totally changed America. It completely changed the ethnic composition of our cities. It redistributed our nation's wealth. It even changed the landscape itself. By the year 1900, we were the leading industrial power in the world. But this new America was dominated by a few very rich men known as robber barons using their business trusts. Our political systems were dominated by political bosses and their political machines. Middle class, working class, the less privileged, had very little power in this new America. But the working class was getting organized. Unions. Reform movements were sweeping across the country. Those unions and reform movements were completely with the robber barons and the political bosses. Strikes, demonstrations, violence broke out across the United States. Many, including Theodore Roosevelt, felt this country was headed for a second civil war. Theodore Roosevelt felt it was his moral obligation to help this country avoid such a conflict. In 1903, Roosevelt put it very, very simply and very directly. He said, all I want is a square deal for every man. When Theodore Roosevelt was governor of New York, he abolished child labor, limited hours for women workers, reformed the state civil service system, increased teacher salaries, and created new state parks and new state forest preserves. When he became president, his foreign policy included the Great White Fleet, the Panama Canal, and he even won the Nobel Peace Prize. His domestic policy took on the robber barons and broke many of their trusts, and he was constantly lobbying Congress for labor reform. He practically doubled the size of your national park system, and he added millions of acres to your national forest system. Theodore Roosevelt's impact to the presidency was so great, many historians today refer to him as our first modern president. In 1913, Roosevelt said, I acted for the public, for the common well-being of all our people, whenever and in whatever manner was necessary. 
unless prevented by the Constitution. Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, Roosevelt, when their country needed them, they were there. So in conclusion, as President Sandy Kett said, ask not what your country can, can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, but what we can do together. States of America. It's hard to imagine, but not long ago, this great land of ours was pure wilderness. A place where millions of bison roamed freely throughout the plains. And those who lived off the land revered it as sacred ground. Yet this country would face a dramatic change, quickly becoming the most advanced nation in the world, in technology, in peace, and in power. From its inception, the United States has shaped itself under the guidance of strong leaders. Leaders who have taken risks, stood up to adversity, and never let go of their vision for a better country. Mount Rushmore reminds us of them, and the countless Americans who have made great sacrifices to ensure the lasting legacy of our country. Freedom. We strived for it. We died for it. <laughs> 